NASA's Magellan mission to Venus is truly groundbreaking. Is it the first mission of its kind? Surprisingly, the answer is no. At the peak of the space race, the Soviet Union ventured to Venus in a series of missions, each one more ambitious than the one preceding it. What they discovered there would send shockwaves across the globe if they were to reveal it, which they didn't. However, decades after the dissolution of the Iron Curtain, details have begun emerging. Join us as we explore the key moments from the Venera missions and dive deep into how Russia just leaked terrifying classified images from the Soviet Union. This is sure to challenge everything you think you know about the space race and the role of the Soviet Union in expanding our understanding of this final frontier. Number 20. Sputnik Satellite and the Space Race When the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 on October 4, 1957, it not only marked a historic milestone in human achievement, but also sent shockwaves across a thoroughly surprised Western world. As the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1 orbited the Earth, broadcasting radio signals that reverberated across the globe. This polished metal sphere, measuring only 58 centimeters in diameter, carried with it the aspirations and ambitions of the Soviet Union. But this technological triumph challenged America's perception of its own supremacy, sparking fears of Soviet dominance in space exploration and missile technology. The space race had begun, and the stakes were higher than ever before. The United States responded by mobilizing its resources to reclaim its position as a leader in scientific innovation. On July 29, 1958, NASA was established and charged with spearheading America's efforts in space exploration. Following Sputnik's success, the Soviet Union achieved another milestone with the launch of Sputnik 2 in November 1957, carrying Laika the dog into space. Four years later, in April 1961, Soviet astronaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into space aboard Vostok 1. While the USA eventually caught and won the space race with a successful moon landing in 1969, the sense of competition, while it lasted, fueled highly ambitious space exploration projects. While the USA set its eyes on Mars, the Soviets were eyeing another neighbor in our galaxy. Number 19. Why didn't the Soviets set foot on Mars? While the United States successfully landed astronauts on the moon and sent robotic missions to Mars, the Soviet Union pursued a different trajectory in its space exploration endeavors. They instead directed their efforts toward exploring Venus. One reason for doing so was the perceived scientific value of studying Earth's sister planet. Venus shares many similarities with Earth in terms of size, mass, and composition, making it an intriguing subject for scientific inquiry. By studying Venus, scientists hoped to gain insights into planetary formation, evolution, and the potential for life beyond Earth. Additionally, Venus presented unique challenges that captured the interest of Soviet scientists and engineers. Unlike Mars, which has a relatively thin atmosphere, Venus is enveloped in a dense layer of clouds composed primarily of sulfuric acid. The extreme temperatures and pressures on Venus's surface make it one of the most hostile environments in the solar system. Naturally, the Soviet Union faced significant difficulties in successfully exploring Venus's surface. Many of their early missions encountered technical issues or failed to transmit data back to Earth due to the harsh conditions on Venus. However, these challenges did not diminish the importance of Venus exploration in the eyes of Soviet scientists, who continued to innovate and refine their spacecraft designs in pursuit of scientific discovery. Number 18. First Attempt at Exploring Venus with Venera 1 Venera 1 was the first spacecraft to undertake an interplanetary flight. As part of the Soviet Union's ambitious Venera program, the spacecraft was launched on the 12th of February 1961. This launch was the second one of its kind as the previous spacecraft failed to depart Earth's orbit. Using a Molnia carrier rocket, Venera 1 was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The 11D-33 engine employed in this mission was the world's first staged combustion cycle rocket engine, and it also pioneered the use of an Ullage engine. This was a big deal because the Ullage engine solved one of the most critical problems with space travel. In space, without gravity, the fuel can float around in the tank. If it's not near the engine when started, the engine won't work well. That's where the Ullage engine comes in. The Ullage engine gives the fuel a little nudge, so it moves towards the main engine before it is started. 
This ensures that when the main engine fires up, it gets the fuel it needs right away. During its initial phase, Venera 1 successfully conducted three telemetry sessions, acquiring valuable solar wind and cosmic ray data at the Earth's magnetopause and approximately 1,900,000 kilometers or 1,200,000 miles from Earth. These sessions confirmed the presence of solar wind in deep space, following the pioneering discovery made by Luna 2. On May 19, 1961, Venera 1 achieved its closest approach to Venus, passing within 100,000 kilometers or 62,000 miles of the planet. Although weak signals from Venera 1 were possibly detected by the British radio telescope at Jodrell Bank in June, Soviet engineers concluded that the mission had likely failed due to the overheating of a solar direction sensor. However, this setback didn't deter the Soviets. Number 17. Planetary Flyby Attempted with Venera 2 The successor to the failed Venera 1 mission, Venera 2 was launched via a Molnia carrier rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on the 12th of November 1965. Equipped with cameras, a magnetometer, solar and cosmic X-ray detectors, piezoelectric detectors, ion traps, a Geiger counter, and receivers for measuring cosmic radio emissions, Venera 2 was well prepared for its scientific mission. On the 27th of February 1966, the spacecraft made its closest approach to Venus, reaching a distance of 23,810 kilometers, or 14,790 miles, which was almost four times closer as compared to its predecessor. During the flyby, all instruments aboard Venera 2 were activated. Since Venus has a very harsh environment with high temperatures, atmospheric pressure, and corrosive gases, ground control lost all communications with Venera 2. The thick atmosphere of Venus hinders radio signals from reaching the spacecraft's receivers on Earth. Electromagnetic interference and equipment malfunctions could also have contributed to communication loss. In any case, the plan was for the probe to store data using onboard recorders and transmit it back to Earth once communication was re-established. However, following the flyby, all attempts to reconnect with the spacecraft proved unsuccessful. On the 4th of March 1966, Venera 2 was officially declared lost. Subsequent investigations revealed that the spacecraft had succumbed to overheating. Number 16. First successful landing on another planet. The next series of Venera probes, which covered models 3 through 6, each weighed around 1 ton and was launched using the Molnia-type booster rocket. These probes were designed with a cruise bus and a spherical atmospheric entry probe. They lacked any specialized landing apparatus as the priority was taking atmospheric measurements. Venera 3 made history on the 1st of March 1966, becoming the first human-made object to impact another planet's surface as it touched the Venusian ground. Unfortunately, the spacecraft's data probes had already failed when it penetrated the hellish atmosphere. As a result, ground control was unable to retrieve any data from within the Venusian atmosphere during this mission. Number 15. Follow-up with the Venus Probe 4. The Soviets made history yet again on October 18, 1967, when Venera 4 became the first spacecraft to measure the atmosphere of another planet. This groundbreaking mission revealed that the predominant gas in Venus's atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Following this monumental success, the Soviet Union celebrated success for the Venera 4, claiming that the probe had also successfully reached the surface of Venus intact. However, data from the American Mariner 5 spacecraft during its flyby of Venus the following day challenged this assertion. Also, it was found that Venus's surface pressure was around 75 to 100 atmospheres, far higher than the 25 atmospheres for which Venera 4's hull was designed to withstand. While the initial claim of Venera 4's successful landing was retracted, the Soviets did gain valuable data for their next launches. Number 14. Data from the Venus probe, 5 changed everything. Venera 5 closely resembled its predecessor, Venera 4, but boasted a sturdier design to withstand the harsh conditions of Venus's atmosphere. As it approached Venus, a specialized capsule containing scientific instruments was detached from the main spacecraft. Equipped with parachutes to slow its descent, the capsule transmitted invaluable data from the Venusian atmosphere. But the most remarkable aspect of this transmission was its duration. 
The data was visible for a shocking 53 minutes on May 16, 1969, which was unprecedented. Ultimately, it landed at coordinates 3 degrees south and 18 degrees east, providing crucial insights into Venus's atmospheric composition and dynamics. Venera 5 was equipped with enhanced chemical analysis tools for more precise measurements of the planet's atmospheric components. Recognizing the extreme density of Venus's atmosphere, engineers adjusted the parachutes to ensure the capsule went as deep as possible before the power for its onboard components ran out. Venera 5 carried the KS-183M spectrometer to study cosmic particle flows and the LA-2U mass spectrometer to analyze the distribution of oxygen and hydrogen within the planet's atmosphere. The probe commenced its descent towards Venus on May 16, 1969, transmitting vital data as it braved the intense conditions of the planet's atmosphere. Despite succumbing to temperatures exceeding 320 degrees C, or 608 degree F, and pressures of 2,610 kilopascals, or 26.1 bars, the probe's photometer detected significant light levels and confirmed the hostile environment previously identified by Venera 4. Not only did the Venera 5 validate the mission's objectives and contribute significantly to our understanding of Venus, the data about Venusian atmospheric composition, pressure, and temperature helped shape future missions for the planet. Number 13. When Soviet artifacts reached the surface of Venus. Venera 6 shared striking similarities with both Venera 4 and 5. As it neared the atmosphere of Venus, a specialized capsule weighing 405 kilograms or 893 pounds was ejected from the main spacecraft. This housed sophisticated scientific instruments, the same as Venera 5. During its parachuted descent, the capsule transmitted invaluable atmospheric data for an impressive duration of 51 minutes on May 17, 1969. Eventually, it landed at coordinates 5 degrees south and 23 degrees east. This marked the first time that symbolic artifacts from any nation had been sent to another planet. The Soviet Union had shipped a medallion bearing the state coat of arms of the Soviet Union and a bas-relief of Lenin to the night side of Venus. Despite encountering extreme temperatures and pressures during its descent, Venera 6 diligently transmitted data at regular intervals before succumbing to the hostile environment of Venus at an altitude of 10 to 12 kilometers, or 6.2 to 7.5 miles. Critical atmospheric samples were obtained at pressures of 2 bars and 10 bars. These samples allowed scientists to analyze various gases, such as carbon dioxide, at different pressure levels within the atmosphere allowing them to better understand the behavior of Venusian atmospheric gases, the planet's atmospheric processes, and evolution over time. Number 12. Venera 7 and the Next Series of Explorations The groundbreaking Venera 7 probe was launched into space in August 1970. This model was meticulously designed to withstand the unforgiving conditions of the planet's surface and execute a soft landing. While it involved only a limited set of tools on board, the mission achieved a major milestone by providing the first direct surface measurements from Venus. Venera 7's Doppler measurements offered groundbreaking insights into the dynamics of Venus's atmosphere, uncovering evidence of zonal winds with astonishing speeds of up to 100 meters per second, or 362 kilometers per hour. However, the mission was not without its challenges. During its descent, the probe's parachute failed shortly before landing, resulting in an impact speed of 17 meters per second, which caused it to topple over upon landing. However, the probe miraculously survived the landing, albeit with misaligned antennas. Despite the antenna misalignment and weakened signal, Venera 7 transmitted valuable data, including temperature telemetry from the Venusian ground, for 23 minutes before its batteries finally expired. On December 15, 1970, Venera 7 became the first human-made probe to successfully transmit data from the surface of Venus. Number 11. Surface Data from Venera 8 Building upon the success of Venera 7, its successor was launched in 1972 with an extended array of scientific instruments tailored for comprehensive surface studies, such as a gamma spectrometer. The cruise bus of Venera 8, as with its predecessor, closely mirrored earlier designs. This allowed for the seamless integration of proven technologies while accommodating the enhanced scientific payload of Venera 8. 
As Venera 8 descended towards the surface of Venus, it transmitted data for the atmospheric conditions and terrain below. Despite lacking a camera, the lander successfully measured the light levels and other environmental parameters, shedding light on the surface characteristics of the planet. Upon landing, Venera 8 steadfastly transmitted data for nearly an hour. This included measurements of atmospheric pressure, temperature, and composition. It also shared surface measurements via gamma-ray analysis to help scientists better understand the planet's geological composition. Number 10. History made yet again with Venera 9. The Venera 9 mission comprised both an orbiter and a lander, marking a significant milestone in planetary exploration. Launched on June 8, 1975, this mission boasted a mass of 4,936 kilograms, or 10,882 pounds. The Venera 9 orbiter made history by becoming the first spacecraft to orbit Venus. The lander also made groundbreaking advancements by becoming the first to return images from the surface of another planet. Yes, you heard that right. After over a decade of exploring the hellish planet, the Soviet Union had unlocked direct visuals from the planet. Venera 9 also observed Venus's dense cloud cover, measuring 30 to 40 kilometers or 19 to 25 miles in thickness. Moreover, Venera 9's sophisticated instrumentation allowed Soviet scientists to detect and analyze various atmospheric chemicals, including hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, bromine, and iodine, providing invaluable insights into the chemical makeup of Venus's atmosphere. The probe also showed us that the planet's surface pressure is approximately 9,100 kilopascals, or 90 atmospheres, and temperatures soar to a scorching 485 degrees Celsius, or 905 degrees Fahrenheit. Surprisingly, the surface light levels were comparable to those experienced at Earth's mid-latitudes on a cloudy summer day. Number 9. Pictures that were too valuable to share. Venera 9's cameras began functioning only two minutes after landing, capturing mesmerizing images that unveiled a landscape characterized by a smooth surface dotted with numerous stones. Venera 9's pioneering endeavor to transmit television pictures, although black and white, made history. These images came directly from the Venusian surface, providing us with the first ever glimpse of this alien landscape. They revealed a starkly barren terrain, devoid of shadows or dust in the air. Viewers can see how the planet's surface is adorned with an array of rocks, remarkably preserved and uneroded. The failure of one of the camera lens covers limited the capture of panoramic pictures to 180 degrees instead of 360 degrees, as originally planned. However, the imagery returned by Venera 9 was still a monumental leap forward in our exploration of Venus. Number 8. Building upon the success with Venera 10. Venera 10 continued the legacy of its predecessor, Venera 9, by providing further insights into the surface features and geological characteristics of the planet. Launched on June 14, 1975, Venera 10 comprised both an orbiter and a lander, equipped with advanced scientific instruments. It became the second probe to transmit black and white television pictures directly from the Venusian surface. The images offered tantalizing glimpses of the alien landscape, revealing lava rocks of pancake shape interspersed with weathered rocks or lava deposits. Despite encountering the same technical glitch as Venera 9, where one of the camera lens covers failed to deploy, Venera 10 still managed to capture impressive imagery spanning 180 degrees of Venus. The insights and images shared by the probe shed light on the planet's geological history and enhanced our ability to interpret future observations of this intriguing world. Number 7. The Venera 11 Mission and Its Bold Objectives The Venera 11 spacecraft embarked on its journey on September 9, 1978. Separating from its flight platform on December 23, 1978, the lander braved the harsh conditions of Venus's atmosphere, hurtling towards the surface at a staggering speed of 11.2 kilometers per second. Venera 11 employed a series of sophisticated braking maneuvers, including aerodynamic braking, parachute braking, and atmospheric braking to ensure a controlled landing. After an hour-long descent, the lander achieved a soft touchdown on the Venusian surface on December 25th. A Christmas miracle indeed. 
Venera 11 successfully transmitted vital information to the flight platform for relay back to Earth. However, this transmission was short-lived, as the lander moved out of range just 95 minutes after touchdown. Interestingly, while the Venera 11 lander boasted two cameras designed for color imaging, it did not yield any images because the lens covers did not separate after landing. Number 6. Venera 12 mission launched to supplement the findings of Venera 11. Venera 12 was launched only five days after its predecessor on September 14, 1978, to unravel the mysteries shrouding the planet's enigmatic atmosphere and surface. Venera 12 had a more direct and faster trajectory to Venus, allowing it to arrive at the planet ahead of the earlier launched Venera 11. Upon separating from its flight platform on December 19, 1978, the Venera 12 lander began its descent. Hurtling through the hostile environment at a breathtaking speed of 11.2 kilometers per second, the lander employed a series of sophisticated braking maneuvers to achieve a soft landing on December 21. For approximately 110 minutes following touchdown, the Venera 12 lander transmitted valuable data to the flight platform. Equipped with a suite of advanced instruments, including a gas chromatograph, devices to study scattered solar radiation and soil composition, and the Groza device for measuring atmospheric electrical discharges, Venera 12 conducted groundbreaking research into the chemical composition of the Venusian atmosphere, the nature of its clouds, and the thermal balance of its atmosphere. Venera 12 reported the presence of lightning and thunder in the Venusian atmosphere and also discovered carbon monoxide at low altitudes. Plus, it reported a high 36 argon to 40 argon ratio in Venus. This contrasts the conditions on Earth where this ratio is relatively stable, meaning that the atmospheric dynamics, chemical reactions, or geological processes of the planet are far different than what we observe around us here on Earth. Number 5. Sounds Heard for the First Time Ever Launched on October 30, 1981, Venera 13 was part of a dual mission alongside its counterpart, Venera 14. One of the most notable achievements of Venera 13 was that it transmitted, for the first time, recordings of actual sounds from another planet. The scientists heard eerie sounds of Venusian winds, the distinct thud of the lander hitting the surface, and even the mechanical actions of pyrotechnic lens cap removal and regolith drilling apparatus. The Venera 13 lander surpassed all expectations. Designed to operate for approximately 32 minutes, it continued to function admirably for at least 127 minutes. The satellite received and relayed the information back to Earth as it flew by Venus, enabling scientists to glean invaluable insights into the planet's atmospheric dynamics, surface composition, and geological features. Number 4. Proof of Extraterrestrial Life While the data itself was valuable beyond measure, its implications went even deeper. A notable academic from the Space Research Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences and one of the principal contributors to the Venera mission, Leonid Konformaliti, alongside fellow academic Stan Karajewski, claimed that they came across signs suggestive of life in the Venera mission. The duo went to great lengths in an article they published in Solar System Research. Konformaliti identified a disk, a black flap, and a scorpion, noting their apparent emergence, fluctuation, and disappearance, which he interpreted as indicative of life forms. However, skeptics refuted these claims, attributing the observed phenomena to other, more natural explanations. Despite the controversy, Xanfomaliti continued to assert his claims in a subsequent article, speculating further on the perceived diversity of life forms near the landing site. While these claims were met with skepticism and ultimately refuted by the Live Science website, the possibility of life on Venus can't be ruled out, especially in light of the existence of extremophiles on Earth. Extremophiles are organisms capable of thriving in extreme environments, such as high temperatures, acidic conditions, or extreme pressure. The discovery of unexpected microbial life in extreme environments on Earth suggests that life may persist under conditions once thought untenable. Therefore, while Venus's harsh conditions make conventional life unlikely, there is a chance that life exists in such inhospitable environments. Number 3. The Speed of Winds on Venus Venera 14 was launched on November 4, 1981, 
five days after its identical counterpart, Venera 13. It employed quartz camera windows protected by lens covers that popped off after descent, allowing it to capture images of the Venusian surface. Using an X-ray fluorescent spectrometer, Venera 14 determined the composition of the surface soil samples, revealing similarities to oceanic tholeitic basalts, which are igneous rocks formed from solidified lava flows on the ocean floor. The lander also used its acoustic microphones to record atmospheric noise, which later allowed scientists to calculate the average wind speed on the surface of Venus. The measurements turned out to be between 0.3 and 0.5 meters per second, which is significantly slower than wind speeds on Earth. Number 2. Venera 15 and 16 missions. With the Venera 15 and 16 missions in 1983, the Soviets adopted a different approach to exploring the hellish planet. These missions focused on orbital observations rather than lander missions. They retained the fundamental design elements of their predecessors, but introduced surface imaging radar equipment in place of entry probes. This radar imaging technology could penetrate Venus's dense cloud cover, allowing the spacecraft to capture detailed images of the planet's surface. Both missions were equipped with identical synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, and radio altimeter systems. The former allowed scientists to map the planet, which took an extensive eight-month operational tour to complete. By the end of this effort, the Soviets had meticulously captured the topography of Venus's surface at a remarkable resolution of one to two kilometers. The radio altimeter facilitated the transmission and reception of signals from the Venusian surface within 0.67 milliseconds. These signals helped scientists gather information about the topography of Venus by measuring the distance from the spacecraft to the surface, thus allowing them to create detailed maps of Venus's terrain. These missions yielded a comprehensive map detailing the surface of the Venusian Northern Hemisphere. Both spacecraft orbited Venus in near-polar elliptical orbits, meticulously mapping the top half of the Northern Atmosphere, totaling an area of about 115 million square kilometers. In addition to the radar imaging and altimetry data, the missions also employed an instrument contributed by East Germany to map variations in surface temperature, enriching our understanding of Venus's complex atmospheric dynamics and geological characteristics. Number 1. Building upon the findings of the Venera missions. While the Soviet Union is no more, the human spirit for exploration still extends to space. The data retrieved by the Venera probes has been instrumental in expanding our understanding of Venus, offering valuable insights into its surface, atmosphere, and environmental conditions. Venera 4 was the first successful probe, revealing that carbon dioxide constitutes the primary component of Venus's atmosphere. Subsequent missions furthered our understanding with Venera 7 delivering crucial temperature, pressure, and atmospheric composition data. Venera 8 employed gamma-ray analysis to measure key surface elements such as potassium, uranium, and thorium. Venera 9 made history by capturing the first images of Venus's surface, augmenting our knowledge with additional gamma-ray analysis. Venera 13 enhanced our understanding with the first color images and X-ray fluorescence data of the planet's surface. The radar images returned by Venera 15 and 16 proved instrumental in allowing us to map Venus's geological features, revealing that its ridges and grooves were the product of tectonic deformations. These findings were pivotal in shaping our understanding of Venus's geological history. Looking to the future, Russia is now working on the Venera D mission to further explore Venus. In case you were wondering, D stands for Dolgozhivushaya, which translates to long-lasting. Scheduled for launch in November 2029, Venera D aims to deploy a highly capable orbiter and lander, possibly equipped with balloons, a sub-satellite for plasma measurements, and a long-lived surface station. This will be a worthwhile follow-up for building upon the discoveries of the Soviet-era missions and contributing significantly to our understanding of our sister planet. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now, it's truly unbelievable.